If you already watched the first part, skip to the 1150 timestamp to get to the second part. Today we'll recap the crime and drama series Dear Child. Watch out and take care. In a cozy house, a woman and two children play happily even though they've been imprisoned. Their kidnapper, whose face remains hidden, inspects their outstretched hands, rewarding them with chocolate. However, the woman bears a mysterious mark on her hand and trembles in fear as the man reminds her of the rules. The scene transitions to the woman fleeing through a forest in a white nightgown. She approaches a passing car, resulting in a collision. In an ambulance, medical professionals strive to stabilize her, while little Hannah, bundled in a blanket, remains at her side reassuring her with comforting words as her heart rate rises. She tells the EMT her mother's blood type. At the accident scene, a policewoman reports a hit and run on the phone. She investigates something in the forest but finds nothing, unaware of someone hiding among the trees. Inside the hospital, as Lena is rushed for treatment, her daughter Hannah explores, catching the attention of Nurse Ruth. When asked about her last name, Hannah replies with Goliath, claiming it as her own choice. During Lena's surgery, flashes of her past abuse torment her, and she pleads to rest. Doctors become alarmed as Lena begins to convulse, sensing that something is terribly wrong. Ruth provides Hannah with new clothes and questions her about the hit and run. Hannah describes the incident as an accident, with the driver staying until the ambulance arrived. She portrays Lena as clumsy and inadvertently suggests Lena had considered homing her father. Ruth is taken aback, leaves to find drawing supplies for Hannah, who tries to reassure herself. Outside, Ruth meets Aida Kurt from Arkansas and relays Hannah's information. In the hospital's break room, Hannah looks out the window and names objects, including a circulation machine. Aida's concern grows due to the lack of a last name and address. Meanwhile, Ruth heads off to contact the psychology department, and Aida instructs the policewoman to investigate potential escape routes around the forest. Gerd Bulling reviews the hit-and-run police report, noticing something unusual. He makes a phone call to Matthias Beck, waking the old man, and shares the news of Lena's discovery at Arkin University Hospital. The call abruptly ends, leaving Matthias to inform his wife Karen Beck that their daughter Lena has been found alive. Lena's surgery concludes with a surprising twist, a blood type mix-up. However, the medical team successfully saves her, prompting an inquiry into the mistake. Hannah is deep in her drawing, reveals details about her home and younger brother Jonathan, but adamantly refuses to disclose her address. She playfully colors the windows black, citing the circulation machine for providing their essential air. Lena is struggling to breathe, lies in bed with the children. A man in a gas mask enters to fix the ventilation, and Hannah thanks her father in her half-asleep state. Ruth tries to inquire about their home, but Hannah insists on secrecy. On their way to the hospital, the Becks receive a call from Gerd, suggesting the woman may not be their Lena, but they decide to continue. Aida discusses the blood type mix-up with a doctor and then meets Dr. Benedict Hampstead, who's there to talk to Hannah. In the break room, Hannah and Aida extend their hands as a sign of trust, ensuring they have nothing hidden. Ruth briefs Aida outside, detailing everything Hannah mentioned about her house and Jonathan. Flashbacks show Jonathan cleaning a blood stain while a man lies unconscious behind him. Benedict questions Hannah about her father, and Aida joins in, inquiring about friends and school. Hannah brushes off the need for friends, claiming homeschooling and awareness of her blood type. When asked about their reason for fleeing, Hannah remains silent. She mentions her cat, Miss Stinky, then lowers her head onto the table, lost in fault, yearning for home or a seaside trip with her mother. While investigating near the forest, the policewoman spots a flicker of light but finds nothing. Benedict tells Aida they'll need more time with Hannah and that she'll stay at the hospital for the night. Aida receives a phone call as Matthias and Karen prepare to visit Lena, learning about her condition from a doctor. Ruth enters the break room, comforting Hannah, who asks to see her mother. In Lena's hospital room, Matthias is visibly distressed, realizing the woman isn't his daughter. Gerd, a state criminal investigator, meets Aida recognizing her from her application to states it. They follow a commotion and find Matthias being restrained by nurses. Gerd calms him down, but Matthias bitterly reminds him of his promise to bring their daughter home. Just then, Ruth arrives with Hannah, who both Matthias and Karen recognize as Lena. In Hannah's thoughts, Matthias is referred to as her grandfather, while outwardly, she stays close to Ruth. In the hospital room, Lena's inner thoughts reveal her awareness of the situation but her inability to communicate. She reflects, Lena, you know what he did. Hannah narrates a sweet tale of her parents' love story while there's a woman walking on the road, receiving a car's flashing headlights. In the present, the Becks and Gerd share their observations about Hannah's striking resemblance to Lena. Aida requests Lena Beck's case file and DNA, also informing the Becks about what they've uncovered regarding Jonathan and their house. Back at the house, the man is still on the floor, his head covered. In a flashback, he unlocks Lena from the bed, thanking her for their time together. Aida advises the Becks to return home while awaiting DNA results, and they mention Lena's ab-negative blood type. Aida questions Gerd's involvement in the Lena Beck case, considering his friendship with Matthias, which he had kept hidden. Frustrated, she learns that there have been no leads on Lena for 13 years. Aida receives a phone call and leaves, 
leaving Gerd to stay with the Bex and promising to update him if the woman in the hospital wakes up. Matthias quietly joins Hannah in the break room, noticing her drawing of their house and promising to take her home. In the hospital, Gerd questions the unconscious woman, and when he asks for her name, she awakens briefly. A mysterious voice in her head guides her to answer as Lena before she passes out again. We glimpse the woman's daily routine under the voice's influence, including a distressing episode where she struggles to open a milk can, prompting Hannah's help. Back to the present, the woman sees Matthias vow to care for Hannah. Near the accident site, a search operation involving police and dogs is underway, using Lena's clothes for scent. A man approaches a roadblock, seeking information, but appears to be regular security personnel. Gerd updates Aida about the woman's brief consciousness and the fresh scar on her hand. Hannah wakes up to breakfast with Dr. Hamstead in her room, where she subtly acknowledges Matthias as her grandfather from a previous encounter. In a garden of flowers, Hannah runs into her grandfather's arms, a moment relayed to Gerd by Benedict, sparking surprise about Matthias possibly meeting Hannah before. Gerd decides he needs a DNA sample from Hannah. Hannah continues sharing stories with Ruth and receives sunglasses to explore the view outside. Gerd discusses his findings with Matthias and Karen, but they react angrily. Ruth collects a DNA sample from Hannah and allows her to visit her mother, emphasizing secrecy. Meanwhile, a police officer discovers fabric on a fence near a decommissioned military field. Hannah, still wearing sunglasses, visits the woman in the hospital and discreetly places something in Lena's hand, whispering, he is always with you. Lena finds a shard of glass in her palm, which she hides under her blanket. Meanwhile, Aida and the policewoman are barred from entering the military field. Gerd attempts to question the woman, seeking her real name and showing her a picture of Lena. He starts describing Lena's talents and her mysterious disappearance after a party. However, the woman's mention of a man causes her heart rate to spike, and the doctor intervenes. In a hushed tone, she asks the doctor to check if she's pregnant. In a flashback, the woman is told to tell the kids a bedtime story, appearing beaten and shocked. Despite her condition, the kids act normally. The man intervenes when the kids can't choose a story. Matthias witnesses Hannah being driven to Benedict's hospital and rushes out. In the car, Benedict explains the clinic to Hannah as Matthias seemingly follows them. Karen tries to reach Matthias to no avail. Gerd arrives and apologizes. Karen confides in him about Matthias's deteriorating condition, and they discuss Gerd's well-being. Gerd advises Karen to go home and wait. Benedict and Hannah arrive at the clinic, engrossed in songs, unaware of Matthias watching from afar. Aida persuades a SWAT team to bypass official permission and breach the military area's fence. The earlier security guard returns, warning them of the restricted zone. Aida disregards his warning, and the men enter. Inside the house, Jonathan observes from the open front door. Once inside, an explosion resounds, prompting Aida to rush over. One of the men has sustained severe leg injuries from the blast. They discover that the place is rigged with mines, and Aida finds herself positioned amid the danger. The woman, once believed to be Lena, but now known otherwise, wakes up bound to a sink in a storeroom. The man enters, calling her Lena, but she doesn't respond. So he leaves, extinguishing the lights. In the present, Aida argues on the phone to expedite the handling of explosives. Benedict brings Hannah to his clinic, assigns her a room, and she goes to sleep. Once alone, she awakens, locks her door, and reaffirms her commitment to following instructions. In the past, the man proposes that the woman dyes her hair blonde in exchange for water. She reluctantly agrees, pushed to her limits. In the present, Gerd sits with the woman and shares the story of how Lena acquired the scar on her hand, caused by a childhood incident at Gerd's birthday party. A flashback shows the man inflicting the same scar on the woman after dyeing her hair. As the explosives team works at the military field, Jonathan hides under his bed with a miniature model of a house. Aida prepares to enter the area, confirming that the mines do not belong to the military. Karen returns home to find Matthias cleaning Lena's old room for Hannah. Matthias insists Hannah is his granddaughter, leaving Karen with questions about why Hannah recognized him. In the past, the woman awakens in the living room, where the man explains the house rules, including the requirement to stand with her hands out when he enters and strict bathroom schedules. In the present, Gerd comforts her after a nightmare, and she realizes she was locked up for five months. In the flashback, the man introduces the woman to her children and assumes the role of her husband presenting themselves as a happy family. The SWAT team and their dogs finally access the military compound, where one of the dogs detects something suspicious. Aida contacts Gerd, speculating about finding the house but expressing concern about the possibility of someone else inside with more explosives. The woman suggests that he might be inside and mentions hitting him with a snow globe. As they enter the house, Aida discovers the man's body, heavily disfigured. Gerd, still on the phone, directs her to search for the boy. The woman advises checking the children's room under the bed, where Aida finds Jonathan. The woman encourages them to convey to Jonathan that he did everything correctly, and he reaches out his hand to Aida. Relieved that Jonathan is safe and he is no longer a threat, Jasmine Grass, formerly known as the woman, shares her real name, Jasmine Grass from Düsseldorf. She discloses her father's name, Ulrich Grass, and Gerd departs to contact him. Aida leaves with Jonathan in her arms. Upon returning, 
Gerd informs Jasmine about the search for her father, when he reveals the severe injuries to the man's face. Jasmine vehemently denies causing them, insisting she struck him only once with a snow globe. After becoming agitated, she receives a sedative from the doctor. Gerd then contacts Karen to deliver the news, while Matthias is occupied setting up a new swing in their garden. Karen underscores the urgency of finding Lena. Jonathan is taken to Benedict's clinic, observed by someone in a car. In Hannah's room, she quietly asks Jonathan if he revealed anything about the baby Sarah. Jonathan responds with a shake of his head. In a flashback, the children sing carols to him and rest as Santa Claus, who gives them gifts. Jonathan receives a snow globe, Hannah gets a stuffed cat, and Lena is told she's getting a baby. Gerd meets with Aida at the house and supports her decision despite her potential suspension due to the mine incident. At the clinic, Jonathan's DNA is collected, and he is given sunglasses, but he tosses them aside when the curtains open. A memory shows Hannah and Lena playing on a beach. Inside the house, they discover security cameras, and Gerd finds drawings under a bunk bed, including a cat, a lighthouse, and portraits of Matthias and Karen. A voiceover mentions Hannah's longing for stories about her grandfather's garden filled with flowers. Gerd sends pictures of the drawings to Karen, explaining how Hannah recognized Matthias. As he explores the house, he envisions the life they led there. In one flashback, the man mistreats Jasmine for not adhering to the toilet schedule, while another shows the children reading books, with Jonathan asking Jasmine about the sensation of happiness, which she conveys through a warm hug. Someone unplugs the router connected to the security cameras, causing the screens to go dark. Simultaneously, an activated bomb is discovered in the house, leading to a hurried evacuation before the explosion. Later, the coroner informs Gerd and Aida that the snow globe attack killed the man, but additional marks on his face were inflicted post-mortem by a missing piece of glass from the snow globe, the same piece Hannah had given to Jasmine. Furthermore, DNA analysis reveals that this unidentified individual does not match either of the children, and despite sharing the same mother, Lena Beck, the children have different fathers, indicating the likely involvement of three perpetrators. What do you guys think of the show so far? This is the second part of the series Dear Child. Jasmine starts her day with her routine, has a successful job interview, and impresses the interviewer. However, an assailant attacks her afterwards, forcing her into a car trunk. In the present, Jasmine applies ointment to her face, haunted by the man's voice. Her father Ulrich helps her pack. The doctor is concerned, but Jasmine insists on leaving after 14 days. Feeling fully recovered, during the drive home, her father mentions people from her past, including her cheating ex-boyfriend Kai, but Jasmine avoids discussing old connections. When he suggests she move in with him, she declines and firmly expresses her reluctance to talk about what happened. Gerd and Aida discover human remains, mainly a skull, in the forest near the house, possibly consumed by wild boars. Karen Beck hears a news report about the discovery while driving and calls Gerd to confirm, but he's uncertain if it's Lena's. Ilrich leaves Jasmine at her apartment, and a local policeman offers assistance nearby. Jasmine reassures her father and goes upstairs, unaware of someone observing from a car. Inside, the man's voice troubles her, and she examines the shard of glass from Hannah. Karen returns home and finds Matthias watching news about the body in the forest. She confides in him that she thinks it could be Lena, and Matthias becomes emotional. Aida comforts Gerd in the forest and shows him a facial reconstruction of the deceased man. She suspects others might be involved, but Gerd is doubtful. Aida ignores a call from a family member, but Gerd advises her to answer it. As he leaves, Aida notices a forgotten strip of pills. At Benedict's clinic, Hannah and Jonathan learn to use stairs. When Jonathan gets scared, Hannah quietly tells him he won't go home when dad arrives. Jonathan cries, and Hannah tries to convince herself she made the right choices. Nearby, a boy in a wheelchair observes. Ruth visits Hannah, giving her a book titled Fairy Tales from 1001 Nights. They read outside, and Hannah proudly shows the book to a nearby security camera. She mentions her grandfather visits daily but won't take Jonathan home. Ruth asks whom Hannah showed the book to, and she says it was her father, who enforces rules through the camera. Breaking rules means penalties, while following them maintains harmony. In her apartment, Jasmine waits until 6 p.m. to start her meal. After Hannah returns to her room, Ruth contacts Aida, suspecting they might be watched through the camera. The coroner informs Aida and Gerd that the skull isn't Lena Beck's but belongs to another woman who died 15 months ago. Oddly, Lena's hairs are found on the skull's hair tie. Since Jasmine was abducted five months ago, the detectives start to realize there must have been someone else involved during the 10-month gap. They decide to search for other missing women. Aida is concerned about Gerd's emotional involvement and gives him the pills she found, mentioning a friend who takes them. Gerd informs Karen and Matthias, and they sadly assume Lena is the first of the missing women to be deceased. They express frustration about the unknown perpetrator. Gerd defends the task force's efforts and shows Matthias the facial reconstruction of the deceased man, but he doesn't recognize him. Ruth returns home to a power outage and investigates a noise from another room. Jasmine wakes up at 7 a.m. In a flashback, 
she shares a chocolate bar with her hungry kids and plays airplane with them. Back in her apartment, she frantically dyes her hair brown. At breakfast, Matthias shares that he's taken time off work. But Karen can't stand to be around Hannah due to her resemblance to Lena. Benedict and Aida visit Hannah and Jonathan, showing Hannah a facial reconstruction. They notice that Hannah calls all men father and recall eight breakfasts they had when they were alone before their mother returned. Meanwhile, Nurse Ruth is discovered dead at her home. Jasmine's neighbor delivers groceries and money from her father, including items from her old home. Matthias asks Hannah about Lena's opinion of him. Hannah praises them as excellent grandparents. Aida learns about Ruth's death raising suspicions due to Ruth's recent attempts to contact her. Gerd visits Jasmine, who hides the groceries bag. Gerd asks Jasmine about the number of men involved. She insists it was just one. When shown a reconstructed photo, she recalls the man was not the attacker, but the driver who accidentally hit her. Jasmine remembers he was about to call an ambulance when someone else attacked him from behind. Overwhelmed by the voice in her head, Jasmine falsely claims the man in the photo is the perpetrator. Meanwhile, the actual criminal is seen buying a new stuffed cat and a snow globe from a store. Inns directs a team to search for more women's remains in the forest, and they indeed discover more. Gerd's doctor worries about his excessive pill use for depression, suggesting hospitalization and medication change, but Gerd declines, focusing on his work. Aida calls with news of another dead woman, not Lena. Gerd leaves the doctor's office finding a newspaper headline labeling Hannah a zombie girl. He talks to Aida about the possibility that someone from the clinic sold a photo of Hannah. Gerd also ponders whether Lena was pregnant when abducted. Matthias is furious over the newspaper article and wants to bring Hannah home immediately. Karen disagrees, and Hannah will stay with them for a bit. When Karen asks about Jonathan, Matthias leaves without answering. Karen calls Gerd to confirm the legality, and he says it's allowed as they're Hannah's closest relatives. At the clinic, Benedict notes a security concern suspecting an unauthorized photo of Hannah. He thinks it's good for her to live with grandparents for more interaction, though Jonathan isn't fully ready. In the clinic's garden, Matthias and Hannah read together. Gerd watches nearby. Hannah finds Miss Stinky on the ground. Jonathan also finds a snow globe under his pillow, but he tosses it aside. At home, Jasmine grapples with a persistent inner voice pushing her to act. She attempts to leave but returns due to heavy traffic. In her room, she contemplates self-harm with glass but is interrupted by a neighbor claiming her father's on the phone, though she knows it's not him. Discovering a hidden camera, she realizes she's being watched. In a flashback, vulnerable in a nightgown, Hannah comforts her. Wearing her sibling's clothes improves her mood, and Jonathan's snow globe gift brings her cheer. Gerd talks to Karen about his conversation with Benedict and his feelings for her, but Karen changes the topic. Florian arrives, welcomed by Karen, and mentions Gerd's interview invitation from France. He shares photos of his two young sons and explains why moving was the best choice for his family. Aida's team IDs the forest bodies as Stella Weber and Caroline Zimmerman, with a list of more missing women. Gerd thinks Lena is different. The security company head visits. Charges against Aida and Gerd are dropped, raising suspicion. Aida studies a photo of security guard Klaus Reinhardt, present during the house discovery. Matthias apologizes to Karen with flowers upon returning, learning of Florian's visit. While Florian waits in line, he observes others getting DNA swabs and shows a photo of the dead man. Aida visits the security company, talking to the knowledgeable secretary. With more information, she questions Klaus Reinhardt about missing office equipment, which he denies. A man giving his DNA swab bumps into Matthias, recognizing him as Lena's old flame, Marat was. Matthias spots Florian leaving Gerd's office and voices suspicion. Gerd clarifies they're not suspects, but are being tested to find Hannah's biological father. Matthias is angered by the revelation he might not be Hannah's biological father, lashing out at Gerd for his past affair with Karen. Aida visits Max at the hospital, but he rejects her apology. Jasmine peacefully bleaches her hair back to blonde in her apartment. In bed, Hannah tells Jonathan that Matthias will take her home for a few days, promising to return if he behaves. Jonathan reveals his mother and the baby are dead. In a flashback, the children hear a crying baby and distress Lena in another room. Lena begs their father to call an ambulance, but he refuses. Later, it's revealed the baby died from childbed fever, possibly linked to an infection that also claimed Lena's life. Gerd gets a late night call about a burning car online. Aida seeks comfort from her partner and two kids after a distressing encounter with Max. The next day, Gerd tells Florian he's Hannah's biological father, shocking Florian, who refuses involvement. Gerd shares this with Aida. Later, Inns and Aida question Klaus Reinhardt about his whereabouts when they found the house, especially the two-hour gap between meetings with Inns and Aida near the military field. Klaus is hesitant to answer. At the clinic, Benedict informs Jonathan that Hannah will stay with Matthias for three days. During the drive home, Hannah asks Matthias to visit the scene near a candy cane-like lighthouse, a favorite spot with her mother. 
Once Hannah leaves, Jonathan looks out the window, lost in thought. Nearby, a boy in a wheelchair named Reuben strikes up a conversation with him. Meanwhile, Gerd visits Jasmine, who reluctantly opens the door with freshly dyed blonde hair wrapped in a towel. Gerd, making an excuse, goes to the bathroom and discovers a package of bleach, noticing a hole in the ceiling. In another room, screens display Jasmine's house. A man enters after Gerd leaves the bathroom. Gerd tells Jasmine about the burnt car, the one from her accident, and notices hidden cameras on the ceiling, questioning her about other captives. Jasmine is shocked and angry, realizing she's a replacement for another captive. Gerd leaves, and Jasmine lays out Lena's old clothes. Elsewhere, the man prepares another house for Lena and the children. The man watches Jasmine through the camera as she smiles in Lena's clothes. Gerd has a disturbing dream of Lena calling for help and wakes up in his car outside Jasmine's house. When the other detective questions why he's there, Gerd stays silent. Matthias returns home with Hannah, avoiding reporters, upsetting Karen, at Benedict's clinic. Reuben tries to chat with Jonathan, who mentions his restriction from talking to others. In a flashback, the man carries the dead driver's body into the house, warning Jonathan not to look. Matthias takes Hannah to her room with the hospital drawing. In the drawing, Hannah points to a baby, and she shares the story of baby Sarah when Matthias asks. Karen intervenes, expressing doubts about their home for Hannah. Unmoved, Matthias leaves Karen, who packs and departs. Aida updates Gerd on their progress. They've identified another dead woman in the forest, a Croatian. They got a tip about a missing Dutch man linked to the hit-and-run car, but he recently routine from South Africa, making his involvement unlikely. Aida tasks Gerd with uncovering Jasmine's deception. In her apartment, Jasmine reschedules her therapy appointment, mentioning her pregnancy. Karen visits Jonathan at the clinic, comforting him as he suffers from an upset stomach. In a flashback, Jasmine, thinly dressed, shivers from the cold in the house. The children seek to resume their lesson, but their father lines them up with extended hands. Although he eventually lets them go, he chastises Jasmine for crying in front of them. In a tense moment, the man, revealed as Lars Rogner, the security company head, insists Jasmine takes a pregnancy test. She snaps, grabbing a snow globe and striking Lars, leaving the children stunned. Jasmine seizes his keys, unlocks the door, and runs, urging the kids to flee too. At night, Matthias discovers Hannah missing from her bed. He finds her in the living room, signaling someone outside and mentioning pebbles at her window. Matthias closes the shutters and returns Hannah upstairs. Jasmine is already awake before 7 in the morning. In the morning, Matthias can't find Hannah. She's in the van with her father, watching Jasmine via surveillance cameras. Hannah naps while her father monitors Jasmine. Jasmine receives a text, telling her he'll wait near her apartment's corner. Reporters arrive at Jasmine's building, tipped off anonymously. Gerd sees Jasmine leaving through another exit, follows but loses her. He spots Lars in his van and tails it. Gerd calls Aida, sharing Hannah's news, and urges her to find a link between the Bex and the security company. In the van, Hannah handcuffs Jasmine. They discuss Nurse Ruth as a grandma, but Lars rejects the idea. Hannah mentions Lars being raised by only grandparents, like her. At the security company, the secretary struggles to find a back link. In Rogner's office, Aida discovers Lars Rogner's mother resembles Lena. Lars never had a father, and his mother vanished. Aida takes photos of this. The secretary finally finds records showing the company installed alarms and security for the Beck family 13 years ago. In a flashback, Lena accidentally locks herself out of her house, and Lars Rogner from the security company helps her, thanked with ice cream. In the present, in the van, Jasmine questions why she is spared when others die, and Hannah suggests it's because she asks for it. On Jasmine's escape attempt, Hannah follows her, subdues the driver, and later meets her father in the forest. She explains and asks for an ambulance to keep Jasmine safe. Touched by Hannah's emotions, Loz agrees. Loz confronts the car driver with the shard, reassures Hannah, and injures the driver. Matthias gets anxious about Hannah during a talk with Gerd, who sends him a GPS alert, prompting Matthias to rush out. Jonathan recognizes Rogner Sr. as an older version of his father when Aida shows him a picture. He also notices the resemblance between Rogner's mother and Lena. Jonathan explains he didn't escape because Hannah told him not to. Lars discreetly disarms Jasmine, taking them to the beach as Hannah requested. Aida updates Gerd on her findings and heads to one of Lars's properties. Jasmine seizes an opportunity, pretending to fall and then stabbing Lars with a concealed shard from a sanitary pad, making it clear she's not Lena. Gerd discovers an abandoned van and finds Lars injured on the shore. He learns that Lena's body is buried in their garden. Meanwhile, Hannah and Jasmine walk into the sea, and for the first time, Hannah removes her sunglasses. Matthias joins Gerd on the sand, watching Hannah and Jasmine by the water. Later, Lena's body is found, bringing closure for her parents. Karen and Matthias attend a support group to start healing. Hannah meets Benedict at the clinic, and Jonathan plays with Reuben, 
Gerd prepares to move on from his work, and Jasmine, now with brown hair, is at home. The closing scene features one last glimpse of Lena walking along a beach. That is the end of the series. What did you think? Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.